person next to you. Join hands with your neighbor, your friend, the stranger. Join hands with your enemy. Join hands with your enemy. Join hands with the person you fell out with last night. That'll get to you. <laughs> look, look, look. <laughs> hold on now, hold on. Listen, listen. We cry unto thee, O God. O oh God, do we mourn and groan and hurt the pain it seems to always be there. But what a joy it is to gather with brothers and sisters and feel the pain being relieved. Because when we are gathered in your name, there is your spirit among us, touching us, opening us up, making sure that some way, somehow, we stop being so dull, drab, and dry, so spiritless, Lord. Help us to move on now. Grab a sense of who we are. Grasp your destiny for our lives and be empowered. Thank you this morning. Thank you this morning for those that we've come to know. Thank you for those that we'd like to know. Thank you for those that we don't know. Thank you this morning. We come reaching out this morning to bring about a more humane and diverse response to people and stop always trying to criminalize folks and dehumanize folks. Thank you this morning for your love. May it reach all of our brothers and sisters throughout the world. And then we'll be able to say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right on. Right on. Shalom. Shalom. Salam. Salam. Gonna sing Kumbaya, my Lord. Words on the wall. Kumbaya. Kumbaya, my Lord.
love and embrace your brothers and sisters. Embrace each other. inside and outside. May we bring to you now one of the most <laughs> melodic gospel groups in America, the Glide Ensemble. Oh 
be here today They said I'd never amount to anything But I'm glad to say That I'm on my way I'm growing more and more each and every day. There were many that started out with me, but now they're gone astray. But I'm
up the offering right now before whoever that was falls out the window. <laughs> Take up the offering, write your checks now, please, tithes and your pledges. The ushers are going to come forth in just a few minutes. We serve over a hundred, uh, we serve over a million meals here per year. Uh, that's one of the designated areas for those of you that are just passing through for your first time. You might want to designate support for that. We also have a scholarship program where we, this past year, gave out 14 scholarships to students to go to colleges and universities. You might want to designate something for that. You know what? If you all could sit down, I bet the folks behind you would be very happy. Just sit where you are. Don't sit on nobody, but just sit where you are. Amen. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, this is Glide. I mean, we're overcrowded. Yeah. And somebody said to me the other, other month, why don't you build a new place, larger? Uh-uh. As soon as you build it, the folks would stop coming, right? No, no, no. We're just going to crowd be here for the next 50 years. Still be crowded out, okay? I think the 9 o'clock had about 10 seats, so you can come at 9 and fill up those 10 seats at 9. No, thank you very much. Um, speaking of pledges, let me just say that this is 1996. The pledge and tithing system is still very much with us. 
We hope that you will make your pledge for 1996. There are pledge cards in front of you. They can be put in the bag when they come by, or they can be, you can fill them out later on, or fill them out when you go home, or whatever the case might be. But we certainly would like for you. By the way, we are up uh, from what we were last year. Uh, we have about 30% more people who have pledged than this time last year. And we're up also in regards to the pledges. So thank you very much for that. Ushers, would you begin to pass the bags, please? Take your time, ushers. I don't want nobody to say to me, the bag didn't come by me. Make, we, we don't have plates here of bags. We have bags. That's to prevent you from sticking your hand down, you know, <laughs> pulling money out. Because when the hippies were here years ago, of course, some of you are still old hippies. But anyway, when the hippies were here years ago, years ago, when some of you were young and hippies, you know, you used to come in here and pull the money out of the basket. So we stopped that. We can see if your hand goes way down there, we know what you're trying to do. And we say, stop it immediately, right? No, but anyway. I just going to pass down. Um, the pledge packets, those of you who have already pledged, or those of you that are pledging today, your pledge packets are downstairs. You can pick up your pledge envelopes down there. Mm, it's hot up here today. Goodness. Uh, tomorrow is the inauguration of uh, Willie Lewis Brown, Jr. And uh, starts at 10 o'clock. Everything t tomorrow is free. There's an interfaith service at the Catholic Church right across the street on Mission Street from Yuba Buena Gardens. In the gardens themselves at 11.30, the actual uh, ceremony will begin, inaugural ceremony. Janice Miri Titani has served as co-chair of Willie Brown's inauguration. And on Tuesday, don't call looking for me and Jan. We got, we got to meet each other again. We haven't known each other. I mean, you know, we used to know each other, but since she's been working in this campaign, we just say, hey. And when she comes in, sometimes I say, I'm in the house. Cecil's in the house, right? <laughs> but anyway, okay. Uh, that's at 11.30. And then tomorrow night at... Uh, Pier 45, uh, there is the big celebration. I'm delighted to say to you that the Glide Ensemble is going to sing tomorrow night at the, at the uh, inauguration also, tomorrow evening. They expect 100,000 people at Pier 45. Don't try to drive down there. As Jan said, catch a bicycle, or walk, or ride on a motorcycle, or catch public transportation, or fly, whatever, you know, whatever, you, whatever your means of transportation. Don't use a vehicle, though, like a car. But come down. Uh, they'd be very happy to see you. We'll be very happy to see you. I'm going to be emceeing the inauguration ceremony tomorrow. Uh, and so I'm very delighted uh, that Willie asked me to, to do that. Now, if you're interested, even if you're not interested, by the time we get through today, we'd love for you to become a part of our family, extended family. So when we finish, you can go right through that door, and the first door to your left, you can go and then people will be there to talk with you for a short time. Members, new members, we're trying to see who, who has the, you know, who's ready to become a part of this fellowship. This church, uh, four years ago, took in close to 900 members. Three years ago, 800. Uh, last year, 600. This year, 500. Uh, so we're growing. We're just growing. We like to grow, you know? Thank you. What else? I've done the graduation. I've done the membership. No, I'm not going to do the, I'm going to do the graduation in just a few minutes. All right. Oh, okay. Thank you. 
Uh, we need those who can help us out with the Martin Luther King event next Monday, which is January 15th. We will be at Yerba Buena Gardens. We'll be marching from the train station on 4th and Townsend. That's where the Cal train comes in. We'll meet the, the train from San Jose and we'll march to Yerba Buena Gardens. That's starting at 11.30 next Monday, Monday the 15th. We need a lot of volunteers. If you can help us, sign up downstairs, please. If you want to march with us or if you just want to meet us at Yerba Buena Gardens, please do so. I'm going to be, uh, along with Jen, we're going to Dallas, Texas on the 5th of uh, February. And uh, uh, I'll be giving two speeches plus being honored at that particular time. Some of you have said you want to go. You've already given Sally, my assistant, your name and so forth. Would you please do that today? This is the last time I'm going to make appeal for that. If anybody wants to go, there are about 20 people signed up others want to go. We need to make reservations for you for the dinner and for the luncheon as well. Huh? Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> She's not going to forget a thing, man. I tell you. This is your last day to do your late Christmas shopping. We have t-shirts, and we have books, Jan's books, my book, the children's book. We have CD tapes, of, uh, as well as uh, uh, CDs and tapes of the Glide Ensemble. Uh, we're going to let, let you continue at ha half price today. After today, it goes up, back where it was, before Christmas. So get your shopping in now. In fact, it was amazing. I didn't know that some folks had not shopped at this point. <laughs> well, here you got a chance to. So much for that, right? Is that it? Taking up the offering? Before I go any further here, no, I'm gonna, let's get the, let's get. We have 37 programs here at Glide. One of the largest programs that we have is our computer and you, the Computer Learning Center. We have 232 people who are graduating from that today, okay? How about that? I think that computers, computers and You is one of the most unique and fascinating programs of Glide Church. What's going on? My, my microphone. Too much power. Um, it fascinates me that in 1995, Computers and You registered nearly 1,500 students, 500 of those being youth and children. Of those students enrolled, 70% have become employed or are pursuing further education. <laughs> Of the youth and children enrolled in Computers and Youth, 65% have markedly improved their grades and academic skills, and we have seen an overall 40% decrease in truancy. Isn't that great? It is fascinating that all of this is accomplished with three staff persons, and that in 1994 alone we had 25,000 volunteer hours donated by those who teach all our classes. It is astonishing that Computers in You enrollment has increased by 50% since 1993. It is enthralling that last month Glide Youth from Computers in You went to San Francisco MoMA that is the Museum of Modern Art and taught other kids how to navigate the World Wide Web and other advanced computer technology. It is 
is exciting to hear the story of one student who newly released from prison came to Computers and You knowing nothing about computers and after being in this program is now a recipient of a full-time scholarship to San Francisco State University. And it is, it is scintillating that you as an extended family continue to support and love and empower so that we can celebrate today the graduation of 232 people from Computers and You. We are so excited. Good morning, family. Good morning. I want, uh, my name is Ben Felix. I'm the director of the Computers and You program. I also want to, hi. I also want to introduce you to our adult education. I'm, sorry. I'm now the director. <laughs> I would like to uh, introduce you to the uh, adult education coordinator, Joanna DeRozac. DeRozac. And our lab manager, Chester Williams. Not only are we here to, to celebrate and to uh, congratulate the 230 students for their accomplishments, we also want to celebrate the volunteers and you who support the center. We have um, a vast pool of volunteers who spend many, many hours. Our students use the center as a networking um, avenue to explore the industry that otherwise they wouldn't be able to have contact with. So we're uh, really, really proud of all our students. The brave ones showed up today. And um, uh, we're going to have a party upstairs. I'd like to um, introduce our first a student to speak to you, um, Dave Stewart. Uh, wow, there's a lot of you out there. Um, last summer I came to Computers and You. I'm a volunteer with several charities, and I didn't even know how to turn on a computer. Now I know how to get into the computer systems, both the Macintosh and the Apple, and do more work with my charity, and also am looking at changing my career since I got hurt at work last year and am studying computer graphics and stuff. And these folks have been just really loving and caring and a whole lot of fun to go up. It's kind of like a, a club of people that just hang out and have fun with each other and help each other learn. So if you're interested, come on up. It's fun. Thank you. I'd also like to introduce to you Debbie Neal as our volunteer speaker. Good morning. I just want to echo a lot of the comments that Dave made. Computers and You is like a family to me. I came about four years ago and I began teaching classes and I haven't left. Um, it is like an extended family and I just want to thank Ben and Joanna and all the other volunteers for all their help and support. I couldn't do it without them. I think one of the important things, I think all, as all of you know, computers are going to be an integral part of our lives, as they already are. And it's going to be so important that places like Computers and You are here to make certain that those who would otherwise not have an opportunity to have access to the internet and all the other little neat um, names that you hear out there have access because of computers in use. So I want to thank all of you for your support and continued support to keep the program running. Thank you so much. Uh, how many years ago did we start from this? Going on seven. Seven years now. David Bunnell came to me and talked about a computer program. And then he called in people with money. And we had lunch one day. And from then on, we've been going. It took us three months to get it started, seven years ago. 
David Bunnell is here this morning. Come on, David. Come here. I've been really fortunate to be really involved in the whole computer revolution for about 20 years now. And um, I was involved in starting up a number of magazines, uh, PC Magazine, Macworld. I started Macworld Expo and a whole bunch of things like that as an entrepreneur and somebody that likes to have ideas and see them happen. And, um, the other day somebody said, well, what was the greatest thing you've been involved with? Was it PC World? No. <laughs> was it Macworld? No. Was it Macworld Expo? No. New Media Magazine? No. Well, what was it? I said, well, it's Computers and You. It's the single greatest thing I've been involved with in my life. <laughs> so I just feel incredibly fortunate to be involved with this and to had the good fortune to start a program like this at Glide Church where it just sort of like an incubator. It, the idea just took off and it's grown and come just incredible. And I particularly just want to mention, I mean we've had so many good volunteers and staff and all kinds of support from different people, but I just feel uh, compelled to say Ben Felix has really carried this program on to a new level. And And I just really admire his dedication to this, and it's, it, it touches me, and I, I just want to say thanks to everybody. Dave Bunnell said to me some time ago, David said to me, what we must do is make sure that this industry is not just an elitist industry. Glide is on the forefront of bringing in the people from all walks of life. So it will not be just an elitist industry. So thank you, huh? And only, and only men also, that's another thing we're breaking. <laughs> only men, that's right. Thank you very much. Anything else? Just, oh, Reedy, my brother Reedy is in the end computers. <laughs> I moved, Rita. I want you to know that. <laughs> I'm going to start computers myself. Now that you have done it, I'm going to start myself. One of these days. I'm not sure when. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, brother. You are a magnificent Thank you, Hello. While they're being seated, Willie Brown's family, every time that they come to see him, in whatever he's being given awards or being elected to become the mayor of San Francisco, no matter what it is, they always come to Glide. Right. Lovey Boyd is here, Gwendolyn Hill, James Walden, James Walden. Shannon Boyd and Baby Do Dolly Hancock. Here's the family, Willie Brown's family. The mayor's family. Now I want you to know, she, look, came in my office and took my, look here, took my robe. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a robe, yes. And anybody else who wants one. Wait, 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 no, no, I'm talking about the Willie Brown family. Yeah. From then on, they cost. I got about 60 or 70 of them up there somewhere. This, this family right here, 
is one of our biggest contributors, so you know I'm going to say, uh, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> Peggy, stand up, Peggy, and show your hand. Yeah. Help me. Cressy, God, my God. Cressy, Cressy and Peggy. I married them. Stand up, Cressy. Stand up. I married them. Dude, I'm telling you, they are very generous <laughs> with Goliath. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, come on. Let's move on. Give me another song. Let's do the, let's do the war song. All right. Let's do the war song. Come on.
come at this time to say to you as we gather that if you've come in with a broken heart, if you've come in down and feeling rejected and feeling like you are nobody, if you feel like you are alone and on the outside, if you feel like that you're marginalized, we just want you to know something. Here, here at this place, here at this place, you can reach out. Just reach out with your life and keep your loving arms around me. Oh yeah. Keep me in your care. Let me know, let me know you're there. And we'll reach out. We'll reach out to you this morning. Yeah, keep your loving arms around me. Listen now, listen. When I
All right, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. My brothers and my sisters, last week I was talking about something that we've all been given, and maybe many of us don't even know it. Something that's come our way. What a gift. What a real gift we have. It's come our way. And it's so difficult for us to open up the gift and receive it as it is, as it comes to us. What a gracious gift we have. I was saying from the writer of Isaiah something that is so much a part of my own life. And I know it's there for you also. Some of you know it, and some of us don't. Fear not then, fear not. I have delivered you. I've even called you by name. And when you walk through the river, you will not be overwhelmed by the water. And when you walk through the fire, it will not consume you. Now why? 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 Because you, 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 me, us, all of us, are precious in God's eyes. Precious. You're precious. I know you've been told a lot of other stuff. I know you've been taught some stuff that pulls you back and sways you down and you get stuck in it. I know you got a lot of extra baggage that you shouldn't have. But don't you know how to unzip the bag and pull the stuff out? Don't you know it's time to empty your bags? It's time to empty your bags. And if you don't know how, I'm going to tell you in a few minutes. And if that doesn't work, come back next Sunday. <laughs> oh, yeah, you see. See, you are precious. Didn't say you are some kind of animalistic, inhuman specimen, specy woman, specy one, man, <laughs> whatever. Look, just stay with me, okay? Don't worry about that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the important thing is you're precious. You are precious. I said that last Sunday, and a number of people came to me and they said, hey man, that really stuck with me. That, that's good preaching. I know it's good preaching. Because it's about life. You, here's, here's, here's a passage where you're not put down. You color, you sit, you clothes. How many times you've been buried? None of that stuff is in this passage. Huh? Huh? What's in this passage is that the writer simply says, Fear not. For behold, when you walk through the water and the fire, you're not consumed, nor are you overwhelmed. Why? Again, you're precious. I said last week that precious means respect. You are respected. Let me push a point this week. You are not rejected. You are somebody. You are a child of God. Oh, I know some people say, well, I didn't join the church and I'm not a part of this group and I'm not a part. Oh, yes, you are. You don't even know it. See, I'm not talking about belonging to church. I'm talking about the spirit that moves among us all. You hear me? It's the spirit I'm talking about. Because I've discovered that a lot of church people who call themselves Christian are those who reject so many other people because the people are not like them. You see? And yet, the writer has God to have the audacity to say, You are precious! That's very radical. Everybody's precious. It's 
very radical in the church. Because you see, in the church we say, only those who are like us. You know, I can just see the people now. Here it is, 10 minutes to 12. And I can just see the churches all over America today. Oh, God is here, God, and we are the children, of, and we are Christian, and we are this, and we are that. What about the mixture of your church? What about the colors of your church? What about the sexual orientations of your church? What about the children of the church? What about the women of the church? What about the men of the church? What about all the folks who come there that look alike and nothing's happening? Tell me, what's going on? The church is still the most racist institution in America at 11 a.m. But you can be racist if you want to, see? I'm precious. I'm precious. I'm precious. I am precious. You don't have to respect me. I got somebody who respects me. You don't have to accept me. I got somebody who, no, all the faults that I got. I mean, I got a lot of faults, y'all. I know some of you don't think that, but I'm gonna tell you now, I got a lot of faults. Got a lot of faults. <laughs> when you hear at nine o'clock, get her out of here. I tell you, here you are bothering me again. Tell my talent, talent, talent. Yeah, I got a lot of faults. And to think that I'm accepted because I am precious. Yeah. To think that you accepted. Because you're precious. Something. What, what the writer's really saying is that you are unique, that you are special, that you are, you are quite a person. You know, you're really somebody. You know, have you ever been told that by somebody who's, you know, trying to make you feel like they really going to make you do what they want you to do? <laughs> well, I ain't lying about it. You know that. And they say, oh, you know, you are really somebody. Watch that. Watch that. Unless they're really saying it in a way that looks at you as a person, a total person. Unless they're trying to say, I will be with you no matter what the circumstances. I understand you now, and I'm trying to understand myself now. Yeah, you, you're something, you're something. You know, that, that's a book... By now, in uh, Andre J. M. or N. Henry, either way, that talks about the beloved, and he says that the beloved are those who have been chosen, and that all people are chosen. That there's nobody that is not chosen. And I want to say to you this morning. If anybody else ever says to you at any time in your life that they reject you because you are gay or lesbian or bisexual or you are poor, uh, you are hungry or you are nobody in their eyesight or you are not a good person or that you are a bad person or that you always stirring up trouble and, and you don't count and, and, and we don't care about you and you go out there and get yourself cleaned up, then we'll take you into church or whatever the case might be. You say to them, there's a minister down on the corner of Taylor and Alice in San Francisco. And say to them that he said to us that good theology, that great theology, that real theology says that everybody is accepted no matter who you are or where you come from. You are chosen. You have been chosen. Now what do you do with your chosenness? 
What do you do with your chosenness? Well, one of the first things you can do is hopefully carry the themes. Will y'all take care of that matter for me, please? Yeah, I know. Wait, 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 wait. This is a man who needs assistance, okay? And so he comes in every Sunday when I get about a, close to half of my sermon gone. <laughs> and he starts talking about military action. <laughs> the war is over. Y'all sang it. Next time he comes in, I'm going to let the Glide Ensemble just sing that song they just finished. The battle's over, yeah. To be chosen means that you don't reject other people, says Nowin. You don't reject other folks. To be chosen, he said, is radical. It is radical because it includes others. Others. It's the others that makes it radical. Everybody else is included. In my family, I said last Sunday, at my table, at this table at Glide, when we sit down to feast with joy, and when we sit down to tell our stories, and when we sit down to talk about our pain, and we sit down to, to, to be fulfilled with the Spirit, at this table, there is no designated seat for anybody. Everybody's welcome at this table. And so you come to this table because you're precious. You see? You're precious. Well, if I'm precious then, why do I have to go through so much? It is because in a greedy, competitive world, most of us choose to be greedy and competitive. Huh? 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 Most of us choose to not be compassionate. Because in the world that I'm talking about, compassion precedes any competition and any greed. In the world that I'm talking about, caring for yourself and caring for others is equal. I'm talking about making things equal and just. Justice comes and justice stands still with the people wherever they are, and says, there shall be no injustice any place. And I am one, along with others, who are chosen to let everybody know that justice shall be ours in this day and time. We should not have to wait for justice to come. In this day and time, justice and love is offered to all of us. There are two themes that we run through here, Glide, that fit this whole thing, and that is, unconditional love and unconditional acceptance. I'm going to keep preaching it and living it and talking it and walking it until every breath in my body is gone because I am convinced, I am convinced that the church, the church must be that group of folks who are so different about what they do and how they do it and when they do it that all people should know that I can go to the church no matter what I'm going through because that's the group of folks who care about me and who have compassion for me. Let the church really be the church. Now let me close out. There are three things that one can do says Nowen, and if you're going to deal with the surroundings that reject humankind, all of the rejections that come. One, you must keep unmasking, he says. You must keep taking off the mask of the world about you for what it is. Take off the mask of the world about you for what it is. For the world manipulates. The world is constantly trying to control. The world is power hungry. It is, 
It, it, is, uh, it is finally a way of destruction. And what he's trying to say is, wherever there are those in the world, those institutions or those individuals who mask themselves, who hide behind something, it is time for us to expose them, to say, no longer. What you got to do is take off the mask. And in taking off others' masks, you got to keep your mask off. Because everybody's got a mask. Everybody pretends. Everybody puts on. Everybody acts like, well, that's not me. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. You got to unmask those things. Secondly, he says that what you got to do is you got to look for places and people where your truth is spoken. And I put down there where your truth is a way of life, where you can live your truth. A man came up to me after 9 o'clock and he said, Cecil, I'm getting ready to go to New York. And is there a place like Glide? And New York. I said, you didn't ask me about Washington, D.C. That's the first one you should ask me about. Is there a place in Washington, D.C. like Glide? And I said, if you'd started there, I would have been quick to say, no, no, not in Washington, D.C. What we've got to do in Washington, D.C. is walk the halls of Congress. And what we've got to do is let people know that are cutting off, off budgets and saying that we must persist in, in, in making sure that people continue to suffer at the expense of those who want to cut taxes or want to take roll back taxes or whatever they want to do with tax. I don't even know nothing about taxes anyway. Just the fact that I know I have to pay some, that I know. But what we've got to do is we've got to make sure that the government knows that it cannot handcuff people and say to them, you cannot work and you cannot go on with your life because we are going to tell you what you must do by cutting out everything. I thought we were doing okay the way we were. I just want you to know that maybe we're going to have to go to the halls of Congress and walk those halls and we're going to have to let them know that the time has come for the people to really speak and act so all of us will have a quality of life. There is no place like Glide in Washington, D.C. I'm sorry to have to say that. And finally, what we must do is celebrate, as he would say, which is what we do here. Celebrate our thank you to God. We must be able to say thank you. We celebrate what has come our way. Thank you. All things, yeah. Anything, yes. Whatever it is, yes. We celebrate it. Good and bad, yes. Worry, yes. Joy, yes. We would rather celebrate worry than joy, though. Because still a lot of us don't know how to be joyful. I can see some folks who come in here and they say, oh, God, what did I get into? What is this? And look how those folks, what are they doing? And you can see them. And somebody sitting beside them saying, come on, man, move, come on. You know? That's why we do what we do here. It is an act of celebration. To affirm ourselves and to affirm our love for ourselves and for each other. And so, I give to you this passage in Matthew and in Isaiah, which says, Behold, my servant whom I uphold, he is, she is my chosen one, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit in them. And they are now new. When the Spirit moves in you and you begin to respond, there, you are new under the sun. The question was asked, is there anything new under the sun? Yeah, I am. I'm not the same old Cecil I used to be, thank God. And I'm not sure I'm going to go where I need to go, but I'm trying anyway. You shouldn't be the same old you that you were either. It's time for us to take on something new sometime. All that old stuff. 
that we talked about, oh, I want to go back to the good old days. No, I don't want to go back to them days at all. Uh-uh. Not me. You want to go back? Uh-uh. No way do I want those days. Somebody say, yeah, but we had more religion then. I'm not sure about that. The important thing is I don't want to go back there because I remember what it was like. And it held me back and held me down and made me make some bad decisions and even went crazy doing it, you know. But the important thing is that the Spirit of the Lord has taken, I think, its case to me and said to me, Cecil Williams, you better get a new spirit about you. You better get a new mind, a new heart, a new soul. You better get to going, man. Don't you know that you are chosen? Don't you know you have been called? Don't you know you are special? Don't you know you are, you are accepted? Don't you know that love comes your way? Now get on up and do something about it. Amen. Shall